from Spotum Nation. How you doing? This is ridiculous. I'm running out of puns. Sit down, Bottom. Put your butt down like I like it. <laughs> we have a uh, fan favorite Gus Constant tell us on the pod this week. So funny. We get into getting back together with exes and then breaking up with them again. And then we get to fucking in another country when you don't live there and you're going for a random hookup. Great episode. Kylie is co-hosting because Maddie's on the road. She is so damn funny. Let me know what you think of her. I think she's so funny. And uh, if you're on YouTube, put some comments in there. You know, some of our more avid commenters are no longer with us. <laughs> so if you guys could just be a little more chronically online for me in that specific way, I would really appreciate it. And tell your friend. Tell your friend about the pod. I'll be in Boston, Portland, Salt Lake City, Columbus, Phoenix, Miami. I'll be coming, and uh, if you're like, what about my city? I'll text you when I tour your city, and patreon.com slash WHGS to support this pod. We really appreciate it. All right, guys, I hope you like it. This is a really great one for comedic chemistry. I loved it. This episode is brought to you by Green Chef. Make this year's resolutions a breeze. Build healthy habits the easy way in 2024 with nutritious recipes from the number one meal kit for clean eating. I absolutely love Green Chef. It's so easy to eat healthy. It's quick and everything tastes delicious. Go to greenchef.com slash 60gay and use code 60gay to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Okay, that's greenchef.com slash 60gay and use code 60gay to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. That's a great offer. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Listener, this episode is brought to you by Smalls. If you're a listener of the show, you know that my cat cannot live without Smalls. Smalls makes the best cat food in the game. It's protein-packed recipes are made with preservative-free ingredients that you'll find in your fridge, and it's delivered right to your door. So make it your New Year's resolution to get your cat eating healthier with Smalls. I've been feeding my cat Smalls a little while. Their fur is softer. They're puking less. They're generally happier. It's made me so ha It's the gayest thing I've ever said, but it makes me so happy to know that they're happy. It's 2024. Are you still feeding your cat's kibble? Head to smalls.com slash gay and use promo code gay at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code gay for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code gay for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. I had sex in, in Bogota, uh, but I, I booked a hotel room because it was $40 and I was sure. like, fuck it. And I like checked in. I gave her my ID and she was like, you need your passport to check into a hotel in a foreign country. Yep. And then I walked outside, stood outside for like five minutes, waited for the guy to come. And then he checked into the hotel using his ID because right. he's a local. Right. She probably was thinking in her brain like, oh, he's probably a prostitute. And then like four hours later, we checked out. <laughs> it was so, but she wasn't there. We were so nervous. We're like, you oh walk God, out, we gotta you're go wearing check out. heels and yeah. your purse is falling over. <laughs> In the hallway or outside, we were having great banter, and then we got here and everything fell apart. What the <laughs> fuck is happening? Uh, I, well. Uh, fuck! Uh, <laughs> shit! Uh, ah! Too many buttons! Uh, oh. oh, so you recently had a breakup. <laughs> oh, well, that does remind me of that because, yes, yes, I did. Oh, can, I honest, honest, baby? Yes. can I be honest, Gus? Can I be honest? Be honest, Ashley. Gus got back, broke up with your boyfriend, got back together. Mm -hmm. It was open the second time? It was open the second time. That's when you as know. As soon as I... <laughs> And literally, this is exactly what happened to me. But as soon as you told me that, I was like, oh, they're not going to make it. No, I mean, listen, it's okay. I didn't know yes. what to say. I, we're, we're, we're friends, but we're not close enough that I can be that person no, for you. I, yeah, and I get that. But there was also friends that like uh, were close that still I could tell were like, I don't want to say anything. Yeah, but You then, have to say something. Well, my parents said something. My, my, my dad said, when you get back together... Uh, the, the the relationship because he can't say the word relationship <laughs> is like a is like a rose uh -huh. and 
when you break up, things like this happen, there's a thorn. And that thorn will always be there. Oh, wow. And so every time we'd get into like a fight. I think that's true, depending true. on De w why you break up. 100%, yeah. but I, there would be times where like uh, we would get into a fight about something that we had already gotten into a fight exactly. about. Where I was like, there's that thorn. Yeah. I could hear my dad, the thorn. And I could be like, oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, damn it. And even when we broke up, I was like, the thorns. <laughs> it really got me. But it I got feel like, me. yeah, you should say something, but I don't know if it were me and someone says something to me, I'm like, fuck you, I'm still gonna do what I want. Yeah, no, that's probably. the thing. But probably. That's, probably. And I think that's why a lot of friends don't say anything, because especially when you know, it's, me, I'm gonna do whatever I want. Honey, so, I wanna don't ruin my own life. Yeah. You know? Listener, write in. Have you ever had success helping your friend out of a relationship? <laughs> no. I think the no. vast majority is gonna be no. a no. no. And even when we broke up, now the second time people have like i could tell the first month everyone was like all right because they don't want to say anything in case and we got back willing, together yeah, again. we're willing to give you a chance did yeah. your glasses just change color no i they? feel like i'm having a stroke they're oh no it's the side it's the side the sides Thank are God. different i was yes. like oh. you did just look like you Whoa. smell toast yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had because toast i remember breath. bumping into you at like a stupid party i don't even remember what that was like a Bravo thing? Like maybe oh, with Hannah? Yes, yes, yes. yes. A and stupid party. Just Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> You're so annoying, dude. It was like this stupid. It was like the red carpet of it like Killers so of the Flower Moon. All I don't the know. the were there. No, that's why it's stupid. Because <laughs> no, if, totally. if you know this world, you're it's like, dumb. yeah, that's dumb. It's oh, so yeah. Dumb. I was just talking about how uh, when I went with Casey to the SNL after party, Taylor Swift was there. And it was like, it was the worst moment of my life. It just felt so. Those odd. after parties are known for having massive celebrities. Yeah, though. and they all. I mean, bodyguard. They're just out in public. She's. I mean, she's more famous than president. She's, she's out in public with all these bodyguards. She's more famous she's than president. Than, I'm turning into Joe Biden. You're more famous than president. She is Times Person of the Year. Yeah, that happened today. So she like, should have been the past five. Yeah, I know she could have easily been. Yeah. Hey, whatever. I think famous people are people, but no offense, they should just stay home if they're going to be in a bubble of bodyguards. Because I'm like, you're on public. This yeah. is embarrassing for you. I don't know. It's hard. Don't they you, literally they talk about how hard Wouldn't that is. You want to go outside? Yeah, but I also have a million dollars. I could build my own outside. What would? <laughs> I would actually, I would just invest in an elaborate ruse. Like oh. I would invest in some sort of mask or. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, there was, yeah, that, yeah. there was that episode of the other two where they build a TGI Fridays oh, and put that. extras in it so that she could literally like have a normal family dinner. That's exactly what you're talking. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, like, so it's like Nathan for you, the yes. rehearsal. Yes, like, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna fully do that. When when I'm so as famous as Taylor Swift, mark my words. But like, if I'm that famous, all I wanna do is like go to a Chipotle alone. I think that's what I would miss yeah. is being able to just go to like, eat a casual lunch alone yes. and listen to music. I feel like now I can't even do that in my deli because my dumb ass, I was drunk one night at 3 a.m. and Wait, I showed- you're deli famous for doing something ridiculous? I showed them my comedy central set. I'm not proud of it at 2 a.m. I was drunk, okay? <laughs> <At> 2 a.m.? <laughs> you got deli, seven minutes? <laughs> you're deli famous? I love bodega famous. I'm bodega- Kylie! I literally, I did the walk of shame one morning, got a smoothie, and I literally looked like I just got like, Fucked so crazy, and did you? I mean, we've talked about this. <laughs> Probably Kylie's. <not>. Kylie <laughs> doesn't like sex. I don't not like sex. I she's like not sex. having good sex. Okay, I just. I feel misunderstood right now. I like sex. I like sex. Someone trying to convince you they like sex. No, I like this. this well, is, yeah. I think our, I actually think is our, this you on a first date? No, I love the National. I love them. They're a great band. I listen oh, to all I of their music. 1975. But I, I will say, I bet the asexual listeners listening right now are like, finally, someone understands me. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. person has been trying to be like, yeah, man. <laughs> I love it when I get all wet and sticky and they're like, how did you make that sound unpleasant? <laughs> yeah, man. No, I'm a horny, but like, I just, I think I, it's, I'm not picking the right people. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. You sound like me in middle school trying to convince people I was straight. Yep. Yep. That's but what I, it feels I, like. I love I know I'm gay. Tits. 
Titties. Oh, did you God. say dick? Did you say titties? No, I said no. I just said tits. What are you talking about? I Don't bully said, me. I think you said <laughs> dick. So I, 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 I heard dick. I heard it. Oh no! I heard it. It's happening again. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we met at this party. I saw your boyfriend times two, second boyfriend round two. Yes, that was the second and that, season. In that moment, I was like, "This is not right." No, oh man, did you really that yeah. moment? Yeah, man. Whoa. You know what's so funny is I think that was that was the first go around too. It wasn't even the second. No, Are I'm you kidding. serious? No, I'm so kidding. <laughs> no, oh, no, no. That's that's the night we told each other we loved you. Yeah, that, that, that was the night I lost my virginity to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think it really depends because my girlfriend and I broke up because of we. Did you our, just break up? Sorry, excuse me. No, no, no. We're oh, good. We're doing great. Oh, okay. But we broke up. The We bro- we dated for a little over a year and we broke up mostly because of our age gap. I was oh. ready for marriage and she wasn't. And we had this very amicable, tearful, sad goodbye because neither one of us wanted to break up, but we both knew we weren't headed in the same direction. That's very different. And we got back different. together a year and a half. Exactly. I think someone phrased it like, if the reason you're breaking up is a, like a, it's someone's moving you know, you're in different phases of life. Like it's just like the timing is wrong. Then, then there is this good possibility that you might be able to get back together one oh, yeah. day. But if but it's you like- didn't have that. No, I did not have that. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But you know what? Honestly, it's, it's for the better. It's really, I feel good yeah. about it. I've had tremendous, tremendous sex. Oh, I was just, I was very excited. Can you tell me more about that? I was in, how did it happen? It was great. It was really good. I don't have to convince anybody. I have another, I have another banter. (laughs) I have another banter thing. Yeah. This is big news for me. I actually don't think it's going to be great for conversation, but I just want to tell everybody. Okay. I have a really small head. So, okay, here we go again with the small head banter. (laughs) (laughs) My God. So, if you guys don't know, I, I suffer from an affliction where, I both look really good in hats and I have an unusually small head. Are you wearing the insert? Is that what you're about to tell us? I'm wearing an insert. <laughs> Show the people. I because What's Lucas an and insert? I talk about this all the time because he's also part of the teeny head gang. Head, yeah. Pinhead gang. And so I went online and I found um foam tape that you put in a hat mm-hmm. to thicken the hat. Oh my god. This so is like it shoe lifts your, for short it's guys. like shoe lifts. I'm wearing I'm wearing head, head lifts, head, head lifts, wow. okay. a head thickener and um, <laughs> a look, stool it's softener, really, a it's, head thickener. Yeah, it's yeah. really hard to come out, you know, and tell people like I'm wearing a hairpiece. I'm wearing shoe lifts. This is this is not natural, but it's, it's giving me confidence. Yeah. And I just want to let the people out there know, like, if this is something you need to do, do it. Yeah. It, yeah. It's worth it. And um, yeah. Yeah. The interesting thing about this one is I think most people would not know what it is. So I don't think I'm they- kind of shocked at how underwhelming it looks. It sort of just looks like a part of the hat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that's great, man. I thought Thank it was going to look like, you know, in like a helmet, like a bike helmet where they have the foam. I think that would be oh. better. Yeah. Because It'd give you more lift, really. Yes. I, I do think I need some in the top. So I might I, it's taped so I can tape it to the inside. So I might do that. Why okay. don't you just stuff it with socks? <laughs> that's a good idea my dirty socks no would you be interested i mean maybe How, what kind of dirty would you like oh god in dirty socks Someone like i went on a run i went on a run dirty i yeah haven't i the other things i do <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love running how is it gonna affect um how is it gonna affect <laughs> How is it going to affect the way it, it, it helps my head, though? Oh, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this was a really good riff. Yeah, so. I like this bit. Hey. But you know what? Ultimately, <laughs> it's my fault because I was like. But this- you said this is going to be a bad bit. Oh, and it was, yeah. yeah. But it, I, I don't. What do you think of the bit? I, I'm just. Well, it's not I, a bit. I, I'm a proud of you for being vulnerable Thank about you. yeah. your head lifts, yeah. and I think that it's something that I think honestly more people should know about. Yeah, that's what yeah. I think. I think it was an. I th- I'm I just know, trying to say this. It doesn't matter if it was funny. I think it was important. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Thank that's you. More important. Okay. There's a solution right. for most things. <laughs> like whatever you're going through, there is a shoe lift head thickener for what you're going through. You know, I do love that, like, we balance out each other because you're, like, vulnerable about your hat inserts and I'm, like, vulnerable about getting molested. (laughs) (laughs) 
I, I, are we at 15? <laughs> Uh, 12. 12. I think that's enough time. Thank you guys for listening. We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with fan favorite, repeat guests, amazing comedian, content creator, cook, book, author. Let's go. Gus, constant, tell us. What's up? How's it going? Thanks for having me. I mean, sorry. <laughs> Tyler, uh, what is going they on? They told me last week I had the magic touch, and now I'm freaking out about it. You got the yips. Do the do the uh. Oh, there you go. Um, I'm glad you're here. I'm Ashley Gavin, cis gay white woman. She her pronouns. I don't think so. Let's come out and type. So we'll go with Salt Lake City, Boston, Portland, Columbus, Ohio, Phoenix, and Tempe. Maybe. Yep, Miami, and then a Europe tour. So get on my text alert or my email alert. And then, as always, sometimes filling in for the hall monitor, she's our survivor thriver. <laughs> 30, the special victim to keep me from getting canceled. That's it. The special victim. Law and order special our, victims our, Oh, unit. my God. Wait, no, this is actually perfect. I have law and order. Where the fuck... I'm Kylie Vincent. She, her, they, maybe they, and none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> to keep me from getting canceled. Yes, the cop, the cancel cop from the special victims unit. <laughs> Holy shit, we found it. That's so funny. That is so funny. People are going to be like, Ashley dismembered a body, and I'll be like, no. That's hot. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You guys can never compliment me again, seriously. It gets to my head. Kylie Vincent, Officer Kylie Vincent, A cab, except for Kylie. Yes. The cancel cop. The only type of good cop. All cops are bad. E I, e -I M. All cops are bad, except if they're molested. I would actually bet to argue. Wait, never mind. <laughs> Those cops are probably yeah, really yeah. I, would act, I would actually say <laughs> I have no evidence. I just have a gut feeling. I have a gut feeling that if yeah. you were molested and you decided to be a cop, uh, you're probably not letting people jump the turnstile, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Good. I'm so glad that for the third time in a row making an episode with you, we have very early in the episode some really trigger heavy jokes that are gonna be very off putting for some people, but very funny really for us. Do you really think they're triggering? I don't know. I don't know, man. Write in. <laughs> Were you triggered? Let Were us you know. triggered We're by the talks of molestation? <laughs> We're sorry. Well, it's like people can talk about like their fish at home, and I have a fish tank, and I have a bunch of fish in there. But would you be triggered by that? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> are, you, are you triggered by that because you have a paralyzed dog? And their fish are allowed yeah. to just swim freely, the, unlike your dog. It's pretty ableist bringing up your pets that have four working. Okay, see, we got there. We got okay, there. Trigger. We, we need to. We need to clarify that. I, I have a. I have in a addition to be our special, being our special victims unit cop, has a has a, a sidekick a dog. Yes. dog. As a, as a paralyzed dog. <laughs> Kylie is doing the work, okay? She has a paralyzed Honestly, dog and three really black is. friends. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing the work. And my dog's black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gus, do you mind introducing yourself with the uh, format? My name is Gus. I uh, he, him pronouns, and I'm a stand-up comic. And, uh, and yeah. you're the fucking man, dude. Thank you. Yeah, I know you've had a hard year. I have had a tough year, man. It's been tough. Listener, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to come see me live, okay? It, it's a really great way to just support the whole team and everything that we do here. So get on my text list or my email list. It's international, both of them. AshleyGavin.com. Go sign up, and I'll literally text you when I'm in your area. So you don't have to hear all these plugs. You can skip right by them. Don't even worry about your city. Just get on one of those two things. And I will let you know, okay? Because there's a lot of cities coming and I just remaking this announcement over and over again. We all think it's annoying. You do, I do. Get on the text list, you piece of shit. Listener, you got those wintertime sads. You stuck in bed. You want to eat ice cream with a fork and never leave the room. Come on, man. Eating well and eating delicious food is not so hard. If you use Green Chef, 
Elevate your everyday wellness with the number one meal kit for clean eating and discover new gut friendly recipes each week. I know that's good for me. When I when I'm on the road, I eat like trash. But when I'm eating Green Chef at home, first of all, it's quick. They have a ton of variety. It's so easy for me to cook something up for me and Jen that's delicious. And it leaves me feeling good. Looking to stock up on functional snacks and clean beverages to support your gut and brain health this January? Head to Green Market and shop our new Green Bundles, a curated selection of unique hand-picked goods that support your overall wellness goals. And something I love about Green Chef is they offer unique, farm-fresh ingredients, organic whole fruits and veggies, and premium proteins. I know that I'm a busy lady, I'm on the go, and sometimes I, I also am groggily rolling out of bed being like, oh my God, I have to cook, and Green Chef takes away that scary feeling for me knowing that I'm going to be able to cook something up fast that is delicious. Go to greenchef.com slash 60gay and use code 60gay to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go to greenchef.com slash 60gay and use code 60gay to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. It's been a wild year. My mom died, and um, and your you know, mom was a, a huge part huge, of huge. well, obviously she was your mom, but then yes. beyond that, she is actually kind of this symbolic mom to the online Greek community. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and it happened on vacation in Greece, which is the the worst part. It's like it's like if you were famous in Japan and then your mom died in Japan. <laughs> Why? Why would you do it there? Why couldn't we be in Oklahoma where no one knew who you were? <laughs> Wait, so like we're like, also it was like a thing. So it was, you know, because she got she got uh, she had a stroke and then she was in a coma for five days. And during that time, we were in Athens, which is a very populated city in which everywhere I went, everybody was stopping me every single block and telling mm. me either, hi, I love you, I follow you on Instagram, or I'm so sorry for your mom. So it was just oh my God. a constant barrage yeah. of yeah. people. Um, and that was really a jarring, weird experience that I think is so difficult to talk about because my friends aren't going to be like, that's so relatable. I know exactly what that's like. It's not, it's just so weird to just be standing there on the phone and then having like a family of five being like, I'm so sorry for your mom. And then having yeah. them cry. And then me being like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's fine. <laughs> like the daughter was crying and I was like, bitch, please. I don't know you. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But it was, it's jarring. And it was, it was just a, uh, it was, it was crazy. Um, Is there but, any part of you? Cause like, I feel like you're still, honoring her on your social media and we talked about like you know what you move into next but is there any part of you that like has moments where you're like oh i wish it was like a little more private and oh 100 percent, yeah there was that whole first month i just wish it was way more there was so much more privacy that i had because it was like even like events i would go to i would just be like barraged by people and that mm. was really tough um giving you condolences yeah yeah, yeah 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 like i just went to a party just to like chill and it was like Everyone I spoke to was like, I'm so like they would find some way to bring it up, even when I thought I was in the clear, mm. which, you know, obviously is respectful and fine. But yeah, after, that's you so know, interesting it's different because I think usually for grief, usually no one wants to talk about it. Yeah. Like, I mean, Sam, when he lost Jonathan, his partner yeah. um, was always saying to me, like, it's crazy how no, if people are so uncomfortable talking about it or they like. It's almost like they think I've moved on at this point. And it's been like two or three months mm -hmm. because they've moved on. And I've found that to be my experience with grief where it's like no one really wants to talk about it. But I guess if you're. It's, it's they knew they, her. They, they knew her. They knew her. So yeah. they want to tell me how like important she was to them too. Mm -hmm. And that's great um and so like it is like weird it is like a community morning yeah you know and it's really felt like but that. then you're the lightning rod for the community like, yeah you're holding this whole yeah. it's almost like i think the appropriate thing to do is like it's great to send a card when and that you can open it on your own my mother didn't i mean this is kind of fucked up but when my dad died my mom for like several years didn't open all the cards and then one day i woke up and i went to find her and she was just sitting at the table with like hundreds of cards that she was like opening up and she was like weeping. 
Mm. It was really, it was really hard to see. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's like, but at least gives you the option. I'm so happy that I have all the DMs on Instagram that I haven't looked at, yes, and I have yes. all the comments that I've barely looked at on the posts. Mm -hmm. So I always have something to go back to as like something physical, right? Something physical that you can go back that to. That I yeah. can just be like, wow, look at these sixty-five thousand people that just sent me a message. It's insane. Yeah. You know. Really so cool. like. That's really cool. Are you going to keep doing the character? You know, I actually don't, I don't know. I've done it for some cameos, but I'm actually not sure. Mm. It feels weird to do it, especially in what, in the con, like, I it's have to be strange really because careful. because to me, yeah. she's a stranger. I don't see her as your mom. I see her as this more like generic Greek mom character. That's yeah. how I think people have now started to split it up, especially when I posted my mom so much on my Instagram that I think it really separated them. You know? Oh yes, that makes sense. Yeah, it like really was like, okay, this is a person that really does exist and this is something that, you know, especially because mm -hmm. I, I speak English as the character and my mom doesn't speak English. <laughs> So it was like, bam, bam. it's very, yeah, bam, bam. it was very, very different. One of the yeah. greatest jokes of all time, in my opinion. Bam, bam. Bam. Oh, my pepper joke. Can you tell it right now? She just, I do this. Oh my God. I can't, I can't, I can't be on the, I can't be on the spot. Okay. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you? <laughs> no, I, I even forgot. How does that joke, oh, the joke goes. Uh, I don't even remember, honestly. I mom, just love her. I think she's at the pizza shop yeah, and she, she wants pepperoni. My mom pepperoni. English. She only, yeah. she, only, she, only, she only knew how to say, hello, how are you? Fuck you. Uh -huh. Like she doesn't even know how to order pizza. <laughs> she just go up to the register and be like, bed, bed. <laughs> Bed, bed, over and over again. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of Margaret Cho's mom jokes oh, that yeah. I watched growing up. Yeah, yeah, I love and Margaret. And obviously, like, it's funny when a character, when a comedian. I love comedians like this. Um, Margaret Cho, obviously, her mom. I don't is an immigrant. You know, I don't have an immigrant Korean mom, but the way Margaret Cho talked about her mother just made me feel so in that world mm. yeah. that it didn't matter that I'd never experienced anything yeah. like that. I was just dying. Wait, same. I had that moment recently watching uh, Mecky Leeper. He's, his mom's Moroccan and he had like this great joke about, um, he's like, immigrant moms will just make up rules that like don't even exist. Like he's like, one time I was at the mall as a kid and I was laughing at something and she's like, you can't laugh at the mall. <laughs> He's like, that's not even a rule. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I actually know the exact, like, it's relatable in some yeah. sense. Oh, absolutely. I had a yeah. friend that way or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, And also, I, I'm with you on that, too. Is like, I can't, like, do stand-up about, like, like, whatever, if I just, like, went through something. Oh, yeah. That it feels like, it feels weird. Yes, to yes. not you have to address process what's it. happening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to do a weekend in Chicago, and, like, you know, a lot of the people in the audience, like, knew who I was and, like, what was going on, and that was, like, the first time that that had happened since, because yeah. it's, like, you do spots. Yeah. Yeah. When you're doing spots around the city, no one knows who the fuck yes, you are, yes. even if you have a following for the most part. So I could get away with some things, whereas that, I really had to just be, like, how am I going to address this, you mm -hmm. know? Because it was, like, I don't know, it was an insane, we have it on vacation. It was, like, such an insane yeah. Yeah. story. It just gets crazier and crazier. Like, yeah. five days of, like, she was in a coma. She died on, like, she officially died when I was on the plane ride back home. So, like, I, we, the doctor was, like, she'll probably, because they don't do, like, they don't pull the plug there. It's not oh. legal. So, even if there's, like, no chance of her, she was brain dead from, like, the second it happened. She was waiting for the ferry on an island to come back to her village. And then we were gonna meet up in Athens. And she turned to my dad and she was like, I have a weird pain here and then collapsed and that was it. The right side of her brain like impacted into her skull and she was gone. So like they flew her to Athens to like find any chance. I'm glad it was fast. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm glad it was fast too. The doctor said she like probably felt pain for like a minute and then that was it. And then she, she hasn't felt pain since. Even her exit is dramatic. So dramatic. <laughs> I know I asked my dad, I was like, did she smoke a cigarette before she died? And he was like, oh, she had a good one. Oh. She had a good one and the fairy was on the way. And I was like, I'm so happy. That's good for her, yeah. you know? Um, but then she was in Athens for five days. It was so funny because she died. We, had, we had all had flights back on the 24th. She died on the 24th, basically the same hour that her flight was supposed to land back in New York City. Mm. Like that's the exact moment she passed. I'm I'm wondering, like, I, I don't I don't mean to be all gay about it. Yeah. But do you ever like think about the significance of like 
How long had she? When was she last in Greece? And like she's she was in Greece. She goes every year. Oh, okay. So it wasn't okay. even like that. I don't know. I think I don't know. It just is. There is a comfort to that though that it happened in Greece, and then you said the the timing of it with like landing in New York. It just like I don't know. It that would would. Did that bring you comfort at all? Kind of. I'm glad it yeah. did happen in Greece. I think yeah. that was the right move for her. She, she got it. <laughs> Good job, yeah, yeah, yeah. For her. I think if you're going to have an aneurysm if or a stroke, you're going to choreograph your yeah, stroke. Exactly. Vacation, choreograph yeah. your well, stroke. Well, the thing I told, because the thing I told, because we buried her in Gre- choreograph your stroke. <laughs> Beautiful. We buried Honestly, her. Honestly, so the synchronized swimming of death. Um, <laughs> That was gorgeous. Great. She's back. Okay. We buried her. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love about you? I love how much you enjoy yourself. Oh man, <laughs> there's no one, no, and I'm telling you, no one on this earth that enjoys myself more no than myself. No one loves your, you more than you, Kylie. Yeah, and <laughs> and people make it known. Sometimes when I'm riffing too hard, they go, can we just have a conversation? Not me. Not you though. Never. You're like, save it for the pot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we were talking about- um, Yeah, Jesse's anyway, back to dark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we buried her in Greece in her village, and I made the joke to my to my dad, which I was like, "We can't bury her in America. She didn't speak English. Who's she gonna talk to? <laughs> oh. Who the fuck is she gonna talk to in the graveyard? She's gonna be so bored. At least she has her mom and her brothers in Greece." Yeah, that's really sweet. <laughs> it's sweet, I yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. And you then, also like, have a good sense of humor about it. Like she, well, she talked about death all the time, like all the time. Oh, how really? old is she? she? Yeah, she was 65. Oh, that's unfortunate. She talked about death like all the time. What did she, she was, say about it? What she were just her was like, hot when takes? I die, when I die, you're going to starve. When I die, you're not going to have food to eat. <laughs> when I die, you're all going to suffer. <laughs> she goes, now that I'm 65, that's it. I'm going to 70 and 70, oh, I'm dead. Wait, so really, everything. she kind of got what she wanted she in a weird way. I, mean, I think she would have hated really getting, she already hated getting older and like slowing down. And so I think 70, 75, if she had to like not, if she couldn't like go up and down stairs and clean, she would have been mad. Yeah. This is not a gay sex episode, but I don't care. What with the cookbook? Are you cooking her recipes? I am doing her recipes, and her sister, my aunt, knows all the recipes. And as my as my mom always used to say, Bathia Zoitsa doesn't know how to do anything. She's useless. <laughs> Even her daughter, her daughter, my cousin was like, Yeah, but you know she don't cook as good as my mom, though, right? And I go, What do you mean? She goes, Your mom always used to tell me, Yo, your, why is your mom so fucking stupid? She can't do a cookie, <laughs> like. So like, there's that element to it where I like love. I'm getting the base of the recipes for my aunt, and I'm you know I'm working off of it. But to, like, you're get skeptical. It, get it? To, I'm, I'm a little skeptical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now is the book like a straight cookbook or is it a memoir and like no, jokes? No, it's gonna and be. Things? There's gonna be like a physical version with pictures and stories, but there's also gonna be a digital version that I'm gonna include like videos of her and like uh, a lot of videos I haven't released yet that I have, which is really cool. Like I have a video of her where I ask I love her this so much, to do guys. like a cookbook, this and she wonderful. gets so excited. I was like, I want to do a cookbook with you, and she's like really I didn't know that and I was like let's do it and she gets like super cute and smiley Aww. and I want to use that video to like open the book that's so special so you were working on this book already. I am working on it yeah I have a lot of the stories written out already I'm almost done with getting the recipes so that's that's the big that's really the big part for me is to like really get those perfect you know what sucks is like this is like a tribute to your mother and some foodie asshole reviewer is gonna be out there <laughs> I know being like well the Spanakopita was just not as flaky no as I, I know I know I know that's be. the issue I have is- it was probably her dumb sister that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was the dumb sister he kept talking about the dumb sister in the book she was right yeah <laughs> you're like maybe but one eggs I don't know the dumb sister you're, told me. you're so right I mean some of the yeah because in the intro I have to really make it clear like She's dead. I didn't know, bitch. It was sudden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. No, yeah. I really think that that's a really, honestly, like, you know, I lost my dad when I was a kid. And so the mystery of trying to re, when you lose someone, you really lose, like, the ability to go and ask them a question, mm-hmm. I think, is, like, the biggest thing that you've lost because you 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 just lost every, everything of their knowledge base. Mm. And so putting together, going through these recipes and trying to remember them and connect with her and remember these stories and like preserve these moments, like that's a part of grief that I think anyone who's gone through grief knows. And I, I don't know, there's something really special about capturing that. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, Sorry, that was like just. I also really love. Gay. I, I really love. No, it was gay. I mean, as fuck. I was over here like. But at the same time, I think it's gonna be really beautiful to like give it to my niece and nephew one day yeah. who like were raised by her. Yeah. And like now she's gone, and mm-hmm. so like it'll be a nice way of being like, here's something you have of her. And food, especially, is such. Yeah. A, I mean, with my dad, he never cooked shit, so yeah. like, that's not what it is. But for many people, food is like one of the biggest connectors they have to their family, their parents. Their lineage, their culture. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every time I microwave mac and cheese, I'm like, <laughs> reminds me of my family. <laughs> that's that's really funny. That's so. Every sad. time I make hot dogs cut up with spaghetti, I yeah. think. Every time, every I, time I have a pig in a blanket, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm every like, time I'm seven years old and I'm popping Eggo waffles into the toaster for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm just gonna. I I looked at my stories for this week. And most of them have a thing that either I was talking. So Maddie's on tour right now. That's why Kylie's subbing in. Oh, nice. So one of these is like a continuation. I'll just, I'll just very briefly say that I was talking to a bodybuilder. Oh, we talked about this. Was it your episode? Yeah. Or yes. Yes. And we all kind of had the same, or maybe it was a one I was guest judging. We all kind of had the same, like, Oh, but she's not like, annoyingly a bodybuilder like she's still <laughs> <laughs> she sent me and this. i know this sounds bad and it is bad what i'm saying i think but she's really strong but like doesn't look like she sent me this unbelievable oh, okay her body is wait can yeah. i see pretty wait so did you spectacular oh wow she's like beautiful. she's you like, open yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I didn't know to that. say that. I didn't know that. No, I'm just a creep no, on the air. No, it's just no, a part of the pod. No, I just, just figured. I just wanted to clarify. I mean, yeah, I, we're I just open. assume, yeah. And like, I'm just, I was like going through, I would, my roster was just super dry for a while and Jen was in LA. So like my sex drive was just so, I like went to this rugby game and I saw all these like rugby dykes and I was like looking at their bodies and I was like, am how I often- so horny that I'm into this now? <laughs> Wait, how often do you have sex, Ashley? Generally? Yeah. What's I like, like to have sex a couple times a week. Yeah, like five, seven. So, <laughs> you though, dude, I mean, I, you're yeah. a monster. I'm a monster. Wait, yeah. so you're a beast. If you're I'm not in a relationship, would that be the same answer? No, it's harder, right? But I still right. would like to. I mean, like, if I have sex three times a week, that's a lovely week. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think Kylie's asking because she's like, "Am I normal?" <laughs> for for well, I don't, the, everybody's. I don't usually go to this specific on the air because yeah. I don't want people to think that there's some number that isn't normal for them. Yeah, there's nothing wrong it's, either. Way. Yeah. That's the thing is, there's no number yeah. that's normal. So yeah. like for me, two feels like all right. Yeah, like we we got it in. Yeah, you know, three feels like this is normal. Four feels pretty normal. Five feels like. Okay, I have to get things done. Do you guys? <laughs> because you're having I'm busy. You you uh, you have gay male sex. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lesbian sex is long. Is long. It's long. My sex is long. I mean, is I it? yeah, like I I like to go for at least two three hours maybe. How the fuck are you doing what you're doing? Whoa. I like last night I went for three hours. What you guys don't enjoy yourselves? No, maybe? I do, but like no that. <laughs> That five times a week, Gus? No, I can't do that five times a week, but but I know, yeah. Wait, yeah. do you guys ever have, like, before you go out, like, you have, like, a feel, like, in the pit of your stomach, you have this little feeling that you're, like, I think I'm going to have sex tonight. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but it's, day. like, it's I not just... that you, like, go out and you're, like, going on a date. It's, like, I just know that I'm going to give off sex vibes wherever I'm going. <laughs> like, I'm going to the bank, and I'm, like, I have this feeling. <laughs> Well, that's part of getting laid is you have to put out the sex vibe. That was low key me Saturday. I was like really feeling myself and I went out and like it was happening everywhere. That's awesome. And I've been doing this and not getting laid at all. So can you imagine? I feel like it's harder for like us though, uh, because well, specifically like I like femme women and I have to go up to them and that's just like so much work for me. Yeah, you're very, you're a little bit femme for femme, which is not something we've talked about a lot about on the pod. No. No. Yeah, we haven't talked about it. I've just been sitting here waiting for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Gus, did you have gay sex this week? I did. I had sex yesterday and I had sex last week when I was in Columbia. Not South Carolina, Columbia. <laughs> I told Kylie that I was going to Columbia for a wedding and she thought I was going to South Carolina. And Oh, I- am I crazy that I thought you were going to Columbia, South Carolina for a wedding rather than a different country? Um. 
I think at one point I probably mentioned. If you know Gus, yeah, because Gus is a native New Yorker. So I think there's a higher. Oh, I think I, you're right about I that. I actually yeah, think yeah. that you have a higher probability of going to Columbia, the country, than South Carolina. That's how I feel about me too, which is why I was shocked when you thought South Carolina. I was like, well, what would I be you doing are, over there? You know, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm used to being around if, trash. Yes, people. I was about to say, if you're of trash, yes, of course yes, you're yes, going to yes. be like South Carolina. So funny. I was like. Yes, Gus, go on vacation to Columbia, South Carolina. Like, I was stoked for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, South Carolina. No, I had sex in, in Bogota with, like, the hottest man. I mean, I can show okay. you a picture. Well, yeah, of course, Colombian the people. The hottest man. I'm going to put this out there. Brazilians, Colombians, mm -hmm. the South American region. Mm -hmm. Costa Ricans. Perhaps the Central. hottest people in the world. I challenge you to find hotter people. Greeks. Greeks are fucking hot. Greeks Yo, are hot. dude. Greeks are hot. Turkish guys are hot. I love mm. Mediterranean women. Uh, I get you. I get you. But I had <laughs> I had sex in Colombia and it was so funny because I was the dumbest fucking American tourist about it the entire time. Like we, okay, so I was staying- Like at, while you were having sex, you were saying tourist stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, where's McDonald's? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, <laughs> You're getting can I railed up the ass. <laughs> Is it safe to use public transit yeah, 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 here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where can I get a McRib around here? I heard Uber is illegal. Yeah, no. Um, I. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Times Square was... of, of Colombia? Of, of Bogota? I mean, I guess it would be um, the Plaza de Bolivar. Of course. That over there, that area. Yeah. But you're like, um, I love that place. This is so cute. I had the best oh time. My the God. plaza. The plaza. But I we I was staying at an Airbnb and it was with the hosts. And I didn't realize first of all, the hosts were two guys named Fabian who were a gay couple. And they called themselves the Fabians. Fabi one and Fabi two. No. <laughs> and I asked That's them, awesome. I, asked them, I was like, is it are you always Fabi one and are you always Fabi two? Or is it like when he's gone, you're like, I'm Fabi one. <laughs> and he was like, no, he's older. So he's always Fabi one. And I was like, oh, okay. So Fabi great. one Kenobi. Just say Fabi top, Fabi bottom. Like this is not. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> it just like is what it is. <laughs> But um, they were both named Fabian and they were staying there. So I was like, I can't really, f I mean, I can fuck in here, but it's small and I don't really want to fuck like in here. I feel like if you're staying with two guys named Fabian, that is the time where you can fuck while they're I there. I know, but it was like too small. <laughs> I didn't think, I don't know. I actually think Kylie is making a great point. Yeah. I think both Fabies, one and two, would be down to maybe accidentally hear you having sex. Well, yeah. the problem was the guy was hooking up with was also named Fabian. So no, you're no, joking. Dude. It just couldn't be Fabi one, no, two, and you, three. I, no, it was, I'm kidding, I'm okay. kidding. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All your, even the pigeon was like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I had a Fabi foursome. I had a Fabi foursome. Hello. Fobsome. A Fobsome. A fobsome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should have, but I did not. Uh, but I, I booked a hotel room because it was forty dollars, and I was sure. like, "Fuck it!" And we, I got to, the hotel was like a twenty minute drive. It was closer where he lived. And so I get to the hotel, I'm going to check in and I speak Spanish pretty well. So I was like trying to talk to her and I like checked in, I gave her my ID and she was like, where's your passport? And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you need your passport to check into a hotel in a foreign country. For real? Yeah. Why? Because they need to, because they need the passport. You can't just check it into a hotel in a foreign <laughs> Wait, country without good your reason. passport. <laughs> Can you Google why, like you please? It. I think it's like a, it's like a. I'm interested to know. It's like a, they need to track where you are. Like if you're checking in places as a, as a foreign really? citizen. Yeah. Huh. There's definitely like, I had, to, I had to use my passport to I check into like all the hotels in Greece. So I, I, I get it. I don't remember using my passport in Canada this weekend. Me either. I didn't use mine in Canada. Oh, did you not? Mm -mm. I mean, Use's I guess it's wife. different. But South America and Canada, very different yeah. though. For sure. Uh, but Canada's in like- In that I would absolutely fuck almost any woman that offered in Colombia. Uh -huh. But Canada, I might be more distur distur disturbed. Disturbed? <laughs> Whoa. Discerning. Strong Discerning. Choice. And it seems, I'm thinking it is like a continental type thing. Like in Europe, they check. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think it's like and there's they everywhere. don't say why. Uh, yeah, they keep that under. I lock think it's a speed. safety thing. Huh. Yeah, yeah, just validating identity, you know. 
stuff like that. So I use my terrorism. I use my New York State driver's license like an idiot, and she was like pasaporte, and I was like, I don't have it. It's at the Airbnb, and she goes, What Airbnb are you talking about? And she and I go, Never mind, I'll be back. And then You're I like, <laughs> Ma'am, ma'am, I'm. I'm just trying to get some ass. I'm just trying to get some fucking dick. I didn't know how to say that in Spanish. <laughs> well, like, now you look know. really suspicious because you're like, I don't have my passport and I already have a place to stay. I know. I look so <laughs> suspicious. And then I walked outside, stood outside for like five minutes, waited for the guy to come and he came. And then he checked into the hotel using his ID. Right. Because he's a local. Right. And he had to like explain the situation. And she just, we had just sat I'm there. I'm Fabian <laughs> 3. I'm here to fuck <laughs> him. Yeah, I'm Bobby three. Yeah. <laughs> so we sat there and she checked us in and we got to the hotel room. She, I, she totally should have called the cops on us. And then she, why is it illegal to be well, gay there? It could have just, it, she probably was thinking in her brain, like, Oh, he's probably a prostitute. Oh, uh, like there's so many places her brain could have went and she didn't do anything. And then we just, well, checked yeah, out. like who calls the cops for nonviolent crime? Yeah. Like a, yeah. like a fucking pussy. Right, I know. She wasn't a loser, so I was, like, glad that she yeah. didn't do anything. And then, like, she four hours loser. later, we checked out. <laughs> it was so... But she wasn't there. We were so nervous. We're like, you oh, walk God, out, we gotta go check out. You're wearing heels and yeah. your purse is falling over. <laughs> By the way, just for anyone sensitive, sex work is real work. I've done sex work. Sex work is real what? work. Yeah. How have we not talked about this? Oh, just another box to check with me, Ashley, huh? <laughs> oh, you have an autoimmune disease. You were sexually assaulted and you worked in sex work. Yeah. I had a sugar daddy and I got fired real quick. <laughs> I was so bad at it. So you had one shift at the coffee shop and he let you go? Are you serious yeah i really did like clock in and clock out like it was like my day job like i was i i just trolled him a little too hard like he'd be like Send you went too hard with the riffs during your sex work i really thought because like wait where are we time wise okay wait can i before we get into your yeah. sex work yeah yeah that which be absolutely needs to happen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i just want to say i for for someone because we were talking about your breakup a little bit. For the people at home who are in these off again, on again things, do you have any pieces of advice for getting out? Because I struggled so hard with on again, off again. Mm. Like bad, dude. Like bad. In there. You know, what was the straw for you? Well, I th the straw is something I really can't get into on the podcast because it's like a whole thing. You have to kill him? No, but he's, you know, there was a lot of issues there. There was okay. just, there was a lot of issues. I, basically what I'll say is there was a lot of issues. If you also want to pretend I didn't ask you that. No, 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 it's a good question, honestly. And I think it's definitely worth answering for people. Um, yes. But uh, there was genuinely a lot of, <laughs> that was so intimate. <laughs> I know, and you really didn't give back. Your <laughs> hand was on my leg. That's, I think my- Your hand was on my leg. Here is my And problem. then I went to hold and your I, hand and you <laughs> went, no, I no. Said, I just, see this is- Gus, the, consider yourself lucky. She cringes every time she has to hug me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the most touchy person. I'm yet. not, uh, yeah, I get that. Um, oh, I am extremely touchy though, when I want to have sex with someone. Oh, yes. Yeah. What? All that to say is there was issues there. We ended on really good terms and I'm glad that it's over. It was definitely the right decision. And I think what I learned through the process was trust your instinct. Yeah. Like you have to trust your instinct like throughout the whole thing. Like there was so many times where I was like, I don't think this is right for me mm -hmm. where I like couldn't just like, cause I liked him and I thought he was a good person that I was like, this is fine. This works. Were you doing like, the thing where you like, this is, this, this is how I always would do it. Oh, this would be perfect if we could just fix this one thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you're saying that over and over again, yeah. it's not going to change. No. Yeah. I've never, ever thought once with Jen, oh, this would be perfect if. Yeah. It's just always been good. Yeah. I'm not thinking about the other thing. I, I mean, this, this whole year, I literally like, I've had... Before my mom died and before the breakup, I had so much therapy and it was mm. like a really good year for that in terms of like 
growing and learning a lot about myself and like learning really how to trust my instincts. And so like when my mom died, the decisions I made from there and like how that situation was handled and the breakup, my therapist was like, you're learning to trust your instincts and like yeah. your instincts are what you're learning about that as well is that your instincts are fucking right. Yeah. Yes. And most that's of the time so they hard are yeah. to like really embrace because you have so many other people and things in your brain yeah. telling you this, especially when you love someone mm -hmm. that you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to just ruin this because I feel like oh, there's something a little off. But yeah. if you just feel like there's something a little off, mm. just fucking, you got to cut it I loose. I think also once you realize like, oh, like this person is hurting me, whatever, but now I'm hurting myself by continually putting myself yes, back yep, in it. Yep. Yeah, 100%. And I, I always felt like, you know, just like, why am, Why would I do this when yeah. I could just be, this could be one less thing I have to worry about, which is hard to get out of, but. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for being vulnerable. I didn't mean to put you. No, yeah, yeah. and I think, you know, with the mom dying, there was a certain sense of, like, clarity. So all you need to do yeah. is have your mom die. No, that's, yeah. So when, something, my, when something catastrophic happens, it does actually help yeah. you align all those lesser priorities. No, for priorities. sure, but no, for the real advice here and the real takeaway is that kill your mother to make the right decisions in your life. Yes, <laughs> and I'm on board with that, honey. Yeah. No, that was the right one. That, that was, was the right one. Okay. Okay. Da -da 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 <laughs> but I'm yeah. We cannot lie now. All right. Well, thank you for yeah. sharing. Yeah. And being so vulnerable. Thank you, guys. Um, you're always um, you're a phenomenal storyteller and, and you know that. And I'm sorry I touched you. Thank you. I'm sorry I touched you. <laughs> um I'm sorry that you were touched, Kylie. <laughs> no, I I was <laughs> I'm so sorry though. Oh, that was good. I didn't even get it. I didn't even get it. I was like, when did Gus touch? Where's the womp oh. womp womp? Womp womp womp. <laughs> she was touched. Wait, can you do it again? Uh, uh, you have to say, I'm sorry I touched you. I'm sorry I touched you. I I'm sorry I touched you. And I'm sorry that you were touched, Kylie. <laughs> Perfect. So anyway, play. let's talk about sex work. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> listener i don't think you can listen to this podcast and not know that i love my cats it's embarrassing <laughs> but i love them more than anything and i want them to have the absolute best that's why i'm so excited to announce that this podcast is sponsored by smalls if you're a listener of the show you know that my cat cannot live Without Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge, and it's delivered right to your door. So make it your New Year's resolution to get your cat eating healthier with Smalls. I love Smalls. I love that they love it. I also love that their fur feels softer. They're puking less. I can just tell that they absolutely love the food. And don't just take it from me. After making the switch to Smalls, 90% of cat owners reported overall health improvements. That's a big deal. The team at Smalls is so confident that your cat will love their product that you can try it risk-free. That means they're going to refund your whole order if your cat won't eat their food. But I, I guarantee personally that they will. It's 2024. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Head to smalls.com slash gay and use promo code gay at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you'll have to use my code GAY for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code GAY for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Sex work is, no, sex work is, is work. It's work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we don't have to talk about that today if you don't yeah, want to. But I would love to hear about it. No, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. What are your rates? Um, I'm so kidding. <laughs> kind of just like anything. <laughs> so it was- How when, did this happen? So when I was living out of my car- um, Good start. Good start. So I I have a SUV and I like ripped the back seats out and my lease was ending in Brooklyn two years ago. And then I was like, okay, what I'm going to do is it was pre-fringe. So I was like, I need to do my show all over. So I just lived out of my car and like just did comedy in different cities. And um, it was during- uh, gas inflation. So by the time when I got to California, it was like $8. <gasps> and I said, whoa, 
I this have is absolutely no money. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> yeah. seriously. Yeah, and so, and then I like, people started getting interested uh, on Instagram because I would like share about like living out of a car and people would be really interested in my it, body. At, at that and, period, no. <laughs> but during that time, that was like, you're a blonde girl living out of your car. That was sort of like a big thing at the time. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of something everyone's into nowadays. And, and but like it was nice. Like I got like really nice messages of like, if you ever need anything, or like you made me like want to live a more minimalist life. And then like some of the messages would be like, God, you're so hot. I want to absolutely eat your face. And I was like, totally, <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> So one guy. If you ever need a couch to crash on, or, or I want to eat your pushy, yeah, or, yeah. or dick, dick, dick to suck. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this one guy, he like messaged me and he was like, "How much for a tip pick?" And I was like, "I don't know. Like honestly, I'd do it for free probably." Um, I didn't. We hopped on a phone call. Literally the most. Un- this is this is so funny. <laughs> this, this is so funny, dude. <laughs> the most unserious. Hop- hopped phone on a call quick Google life. chat. <laughs> was it all men? The work that you did. Um, the sex work? Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess it, as far as I know, unless they're like, sure, sure, you know, but, um, I was like literally on a, on my friend's couch like this and I was like talking to him on speakerphone, my friend's over there and I'm like, okay, so what do I have to do? <laughs> and he's like, uh, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. And I was like, no, but like, how do I get paid? And he was like okay, well, like, I just want, like, pictures. And I was like, okay, my face can't be in it. And he's like, okay. And I was like, okay, so are you going to pay me? And then he's like, yeah, I'll pay you in Ethereum, and you can transfer it. Ethereum? (laughs) Yes. Which I did. in L.A. at this time? Uh, I think when I took this phone call, I was in Asheville, North Carolina. I can just imagine a bro being like, and the exchange rate is really good right now. Yeah, no, no. Ethereum is very high right now. He's like, you can take out the full amount now, but like what what I would tell you is it will appreciate (laughs) over time. And I was like, do you want to see my pussy or not? Because I don't want to talk about. So classic. Fucking. Ethereum. (laughs) You're just taking it for free now to get him to shut the fuck up. It's actually like his plan. It literally he's like he's a- talking about it. You're like, just, just fucking take it. Just I'm, like, take it. <laughs> I'm like, you can't ask for my body and also give me advice like you're my uncle. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is triggering. Triggered. Um, but no, no, I was just like, ah, yeah, I need money and like, why not? Um, and in my head, I was so just- men just because I know this is happening. Mm. Men are at. You want to jump on Mike? Well, do you still have the Ethereum has been growing? Uh, I took most of it out. I left 50 bucks in there. And every time I check it. Um, it's negative 5,000. <laughs> 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 I actually want to keep it in there forever because I just think it's funny to like go Great to reminder Ethereum. of a fun time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. I love that. I fucking love that. <laughs> it's always at a negative percentage. Yes. Wow, yeah. Um, it might be back up. Uh, it is. It is. It uh, is. It's been going back up lately. Oh, One day, baby, thanks. check it. You never know. She checks it today, and it's like ten grand. Be amazing. Do you think so, Ashley? Not like that. No, not at all. <laughs> I'm saying if he gave you fifty, it <laughs> might be to me. I'm an it idiot. It might be fifty-one today. <laughs> I know. I'm dumb. I don't even know how to bring my passport to a hotel to check in, like a fucking moron. I couldn't even. I didn't even bring a bag with me to like pretend like I was checking in a oh, hotel. Yeah. <laughs> like, give the illusion at least. No, I just showed up in a coat and I was like, hey, the, 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 that's the, how that's the, how I'm doing things too. Yeah, I don't need to you. explain anything yeah. to anybody. I just show up. But this happens. Men will just message women. Yeah. For yeah. Picks like that. Yeah. I. And, I get and then women for, like, feet do picks. it. No one's messaging me for picks for money. Oh. Patreon.com slash WHS. Maybe because <laughs> maybe because you're a raging lesbian. Maybe. I feel like people are attracted. Like, I don't think I'm a crazy person, but just in the way that I'm like talk about things and I'm very direct. Um, specifically, like incel men are like she's kind of crazy. I think it's you interesting know? that you had this like it would just take it all out. For me, I don't think I could enjoy a tit pick. If I'm like buying it. So actually mm. there is like a weird 
Not, and I know that some people feel that way, and I'm not. I'm not trying to shit on you. Yeah, there's I like think a, this is there's a fetish of like fin fin dom. I know, you know, yeah. and people get really into it. Yeah, and like I kind of get it. Like there's something is arousing about being like I don't know, like oh you want twenty bucks here, I don't or know. or yeah. flipped. You're in this power position because yes. you have the money. Like it's it's interesting to me, but for me talking to you on the phone about like how I'm gonna get the tit pick. Yeah. It seems so technical. It takes away yeah, from the actual yeah. desire. For me, it would not be mm. good. I personally liked it in the way that I was like, I felt like I was playing a character that, especially when, when you're like, I don't texting. like the like the guy or no, the no. sex part of it, but the role play was solid. It was hilarious. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I filmed it for my reel. <laughs> Kylie Vincent best of reels. <laughs> and I, well, because it was best all- of reel, you being like, how am I going to get my money? <laughs> okay, Ethereum. What is Ethereum? <laughs> like, I mean, it was all online too. So it's like, I, but this is, this is why I got fired is because. Fired? I got fired. He wanted the tit pick and then he fired you. No, like I was employed by him for like a week. Oh, he employed you. And then he said, we're not going to continue this. <gasps> <laughs> Okay. Brutal. All I As had your to do, freelance employer, I'm interested to know. All I had to do was send a tip pic and go, "Ooh, yeah, you like that or whatever." But no, I like couldn't. Like a video or a text. Like a text, but uh-huh. instead he was like, "Okay, this one." He was like, a- "Ask for like a video of my tits and to for me to talk." <laughs> so. <laughs> I was with my friend. I literally just pull out my boobs like it's like it's like fruit I have under my shirt. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, you like that? You like you wanna frisk me down like the TSA? Ooh. The TSA? <laughs> and you could hear me and my friend like being like, ooh, yeah. This dude's rich. He has clear. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> oh, you have TSA pre check. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, you don't have to take off your shoes, but you still got to look at these titties. <laughs> I'll take off my shoes. Huh? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so he... Um, didn't decide to continue with me. Okay, but he wasn't pimping you out for other people. No, 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 no. Okay. It wasn't- It um, was your, he was your, one of your clients. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I've always felt like, I don't know, just to, in my head, like I get sexualized by men all the time. You might as well make money. Yeah, no, no. matter what I do. Like I could literally be like, like I could do something as dumb as that and people would still like, Try, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just feel like it actually is more powerful to. I am so lucky. Men leave me the fuck alone. Mm. They really do. Yeah, and and I really. <laughs> God, you are lucky. What? I know. Me and Kylie are sitting here like, wow, isn't that so nice? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. I I have wondered my whole life what it is about me that keeps me from being a part of this. Well, you're like. You're clearly gay, and also you're clearly you clearly have a wall up, <laughs> kind of a stone wall. What? <laughs> if bricks were being yes. thrown, it wouldn't be a straight man be... throwing that brick. <laughs> <laughs> if 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 bricks were being taken from your wall, mm-hmm. they'd be being thrown by a black trans woman. Yeah. What the first brick at Stonewall? I <laughs> sorry. I don't think I can do this no. podcast ever again. <laughs> I didn't. You're gonna get canceled That's in the comments. So you don't know who Marsha P. Johnson is. <laughs> I do. I just, you know, I didn't know As it would turn into a Stonewall riff. Marsha P. Johnson. Is. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I please. If you're mad about this, I please my, unsubscribe. You know what? I'll tell you the thing about Marsha P. Johnson that annoys me is that other than you motherfucking young queer people knowing the name Marsha P. Johnson, you couldn't name one other fucking fact about <laughs> queer history. Yeah. Literally, you have latched on to the narrative of Marsha P. Johnson, which is has a lot of validity and is very a, a optical cool story. performance fetishizing a black trans woman. But literally, <laughs> you don't know any fucking thing else about that day or that night or about the Stonewall riots. Literally at all. So yeah. literally go watch a fucking movie about it. Thank God you. Damn it. Thank you. 
Like, my, I'm so sorry of people throwing that name at me as if you fucking knew her social security number. Like, calm <laughs> down. <laughs> calm down. My queer history is Andy Cohen. There you go. <laughs> that was great. No, it drives me crazy. You know, I was watching this. <laughs> people are mad at me because I said, I said that, you know, even though I'm Jewish, I'm interested in like a two state solution and you Don't know, free say Palestine. That. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> but like I talk, I basically, talk, let's say it this way. I, talk, I basically like express my support for ending this genocide. And some Jews got mad at me yeah. and are like sending me this propaganda that frankly is like really good propaganda because they're, they, it happened down here, downtown. There was a protest mm. um, against, I'm not, I, I don't They're know. They're like, Ashley, we'll give you a Netflix credit. <laughs> Bro, if Netflix offered me like special with marketing, and you had I'd to be, be like, pro but Israel. Hamas. Anyway, but <laughs> no, I would not, obviously. Uh, yeah, no. But it's funny Definitely because- I condemn Hamas. <laughs> but it's funny because they went downtown, some of these like propaganda guys, and they were interviewing like the Gen Z, like super woke, oh, ultra woke yeah. kids. And they don't they know. They don't know anything. They, they don't shit. know shit. They, they just yell anything. shit like Martha P. Jo Marsha P. Johnson, but they don't know what they're actually saying. So this propaganda guy <laughs> goes up to this girl and is like, what do you think about Hamas? And she's like, like just absolutely bullshitting, trying yeah. to get around it. And he's like, but do you condemn Hamas and she goes, you got to do what you got to do. I support like I, she had no oh, idea. I'm oh, literally no. embarrassed to it's be embarrassing. associated. Like I'm like, you guys, it's, as a liberal, I'm like, oh yes, my God, yes, we're yeah. supposed to be the smart ones. I know. Cause and, I'm like, yeah. this side's too hateful and this side literally doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. And they're coming from a place of privilege. They're getting their news on fucking right. TikTok. Yeah. And then There's going, so much virtue signaling going on. Yeah. Virtue signaling is out it's of It's so off. insane, yes. I watched this TikTok from this one Palestinian creator that I love and he said, kill everybody. Like, no, that's not how it works. And then no. they're using photos Don't from Syria yeah. and people just think it's real. Just I mean, like, it's crazy. Follow accounts and learn, just learn. Yeah. Just watch them, just or watch maybe Get your news from an accredited news source. Well, that's you true could too. Read. For Christ's sake, yes, yeah. Jesus. Or you can also admit, hey, I don't know a lot about this, but I know that I don't want innocent right. people dying. <laughs> I know when people ask me, I'm like, I'm not Israeli and I'm not Palestinian, and <laughs> that's literally what I say. That's literally what I say. Anyway, where are we at time wise? Uh, okay, so I think that's like. Want to wrap up your your sex work, or I mean, what is it? Did you never decide to pursue it again? Yeah. Um, like people will still message me for things, and I'm I'm not yeah I'm not opposed to making some money off of some pictures and stuff, or like right. even just talking. Honestly, to them. that's great. You should do that. Yeah, no, that's I agree. I I think like there was a part of me that was like really nervous because you know like there's like the the like um I mean they could leak them. Well, that I don't care, actually. Oh, well, then if you don't care. Because th that's illegal. It's revenge porn. They could get in trouble. And also, I don't care if people see my body. It's probably the best it's ever going to look in my entire life. I will say I, so I have a close re relative who went through a revenge porn situation. Mm. Um, it was horrible. Mm. It was held up in the courts for years. Uh. It was an awful emotional experience. Of so her. maybe don't be, feel so like lackadaisical about this. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying. I just feel even it is it is a crime. Yeah, but the way women are treated in it's court horrible. is totally. horrendous. But I just feel like it, you know it like makes them look bad. I just don't care if people see it, and if it makes them look bad that they're like trying to get something out of me. Um, yeah, I just, it, it, it doesn't really, like I was saying before, I'm already sexualized, so. Might as well make money. Yeah. Look at J-Law. I mean, she had those nudes leaked and then she's doing full frontal and it's Ooh, fucking. She's amazing. It's, it's amazing. She's amazing. It's not that know serious that. for me. Like, yeah, the movie, the movie she just no did. Hard feelings. She's no hard fully feelings. naked in it. Oh. And it's so funny. Oh, great. It's yeah. the first time it's actually weirdly empowering yeah because you see men running around in films just like holding their dicks like yeah. comedically all the time yeah and it was the first time i saw a woman and i i kind of have a crush on jay law like i think she's so funny yeah I she's, love so, she's so talented so like obviously i'm gonna watch her naked movie <laughs> obviously but, i'm gonna pause it 
right when she gets naked. No, I didn't do that. No, no, I respect her talent. Um, no. But it was the first, but it wasn't sexual. Yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And it was the first time I ever saw, I'm, and I'm attracted to women. It was the first time I ever saw a woman doing that type of nude comedy in a major motion picture yeah. where it didn't feel sexualized. It just felt hilarious that she was naked. Yeah, and it's exactly. And also I'm not like, it's like I was saying, like I'm playing a character when I do it, yeah. when I do that. But also it's like, I'm not like, I would never be embarrassed by the things that would be like leaked. I'd be like, that's funny. Like, this is right. a whole bit. You guys think I'm taking this seriously? Oh right. man, I can't wait till the internet comes out. Oh after man. You. All right. Why? Why? No, I'm messing around. I'm being silly. Well, wait, I think, why? I think it's going to be both of these things. You're either going to be like, well, I'm hot, or this is hilarious. Well, this is good and content. I'm, I feel like I, yeah, I, yeah, I feel like, like I said, I'm like, I'm never going to be 23 again. So, yeah. Might as well make money off of it. I will say the hottest I ever was in my life was probably around 31. Mm. I'm 31 right now. I think you get hotter into your 30s. And I feel like I feel like this is probably the best my body's ever looked. Yeah, so the best I'm, my I'm body ever happy. looked, in my opinion, for me. And then also, like, I just, as you age, like, some good things actually happen on your face. 100%, yeah. yeah. I didn't like my young face. It didn't look... Like, I had more, like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But anyway, we have to stop now. Yes, we do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kylie. Christ. Where can people find you? What are you doing? Where are you touring? Yada, yada. Oh, find me at Constantly Gus, all my socials. And uh, I'm working on the cookbook. I'm not really touring right now. I'm working on the cookbook. Ooh. So join the channel. If you're interested, I have a channel on my Instagram feed where you can join. And I, I'm posting some of the like recipes and I'm posting some like behind the scenes content and stuff and stuff like that. So it'll be really fun. Amazing. Yeah. Kylie? Kylie Vincent the first on all socials. I'm touring at some point. <laughs> um, and you guys know for me, patreon.com slash WHGS. A monthly small donation is so helpful because even though it doesn't feel like a lot for you to give us a dollar, us knowing that that dollar is coming every month can help us do a lot of planning. And there's a lot of people on staff and our contractors and all of that, that, you know, they're, they're, this is important income for them. Go ahead, do what you need to do. This is important income for them and, you know, support these queer artists. Patreon.com slash WHGS, AshleyGavin.com to sign up to get a text when I'm in your city. Way too many of you who listen to the fucking podcast don't know that I'm in your city and it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I don't spam. I built it myself. I'm not selling the data, you piece of shit. Into the mic. <laughs> baby, baby, if you're, if and if stop. you knew anything about Marsha P. Johnson, <laughs> you know that she would support a queer independent artist. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about Marsha P. Johnson, you would know that she loved texting <laughs> and being part of text things. If you knew yeah. anything <laughs> about Martha P. Johnson, <laughs> she actually gave me the idea for this podcast and I started it in her memory. If you know anything about Martha P. Johnson, is she loves string cheese and opening them with her toes. If you knew anything about Martha J. Johnson, right? Martha P. It's correct. <laughs> um, Martha P. <laughs> you would know that that's actually her right there. That's her right there. Just so you know. If you knew anything about Amanda Q. Jackson. <laughs> If you know anything about <laughs> Hillary Duff, you would know she was at Stonewall. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing she, that brick hand in it. hand. Thank she you, Hillary. It. The song that played at Stonewall that night was Let actually- Let the rain fall down, down and, and wash my dreams. Let it wash away. Martha P. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> no, but really, read a book. <laughs> Wait, really? Read my memoir. I wrote about being Martha P. Read my memoir. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening, guys. 
I'm really trying to ramp up our small donors. One, three, five dollar monthly donors that we can count on that every month. Um, it really helps us do financial planning. And frankly, you're a piece of shit if you don't do it. <laughs> you don't support gay art. You don't support Democrats. You don't support the left. You don't support your friends. You're a bad friend. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Speaking of bad friends, my gay thought today is not going to be about gay. It's just going to be just a little vent. My best friend, Sam Morrison, told me that he's moving to Los Angeles and I am devastated. I am so sad. I am so fucking sad, dude. Uh, please, if one of your best friends has moved across the country, stranding, str stranding you on the desert island of Manhattan, if you have any tips, please write them down. I am going to miss him. He is like my brother. He is the definition of chosen family for me. That, that'll make it the gay thought, and I'm just very sad. Ah! Um, come see me uh, not be sad at a show, and please donate to the Patreon. You guys have no idea. The ads, it, it, it's nothing compared to the Patreon. It really supports this whole thing. Have a good week, Bottoms. <laughs>